My name is Darren Wagner, the head trader of Morpheus. And, uh, what you're looking at right here is actually the login page for the uh, Morpheus members area of the website. This is the page you see when you log in. As a reminder, you can actually read the newsletter every day by logging in here. If you ever don't have access to your email, you just log in with your credentials and click on read today's newsletter. On here, of course, you can also download the recording of each webinar if you missed any, um, as well as a couple other things on here. You can launch the live trading room as well. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, today's newsletter because this is what I wanted to talk about was something that we wrote about in today's newsletter. In the ETF section, we wrote about uh, the broad market, and I'll come back to that in a minute. But what I wanted to start with uh, today is actually the stock commentary. And let me make this a little bit larger. What you're looking at here is the stock commentary in today's uh, Wagner Daily uh, Swing Trading Newsletter. It says here the chart below is a snapshot of the IBD 8585 index. Uh, IBD meaning Investors Business Daily. Uh, that's an index they, that they publish which shows uh, the rank of the top 15% of stocks uh, technically and fundamentally. In other words, these are the strongest growth stocks in the market. And uh, we use this uh, not, as a, not as a basis for when to buy individual stocks, but just as a overall confirmation indicator of the health of the market now what's interesting is you know since you know, since middle of last week the S&P 500 and uh, the Nasdaq uh, you know well, primarily the S&P and the Dow have pushed higher uh, but we've got a bearish divergence here with the IBD 8585 index notice that over the past two days meaning uh, Monday and Tuesday of this week you can look at where the candles closed it hasn't moved. It's been flat, this index, over the past two days. Yet, the market's been climbing higher. Now, what does this tell us? Well, it tells us we've got bearish divergence in the relative strength of leading stocks. And we actually um, uh, published a, a short post on this on our blog recently. Uh, the title of the post was, This Technical Indicator Doesn't Look So Good for the Bulls. And we sent out that same article on the Wagner Weekly Newsletter as well. Um, so this is just another way of looking at it, but as it says right here, we ran a simple scan that compared today's closing price versus the close three days ago on the Russell 1000. In scanning the 50 biggest percentage movers, we found 43 of those 50 started their move from below the 200-day moving average, which means that most of the stocks rallying are junk off the bottom plays. The fact that small and mid-cap stocks continue to lag remains a concern. So. The IBD growth index obviously is comprised primarily of small and mid-cap stocks. Well, uh, because it's been lagging, that's why we haven't seen uh, it move higher as the, you know, the S&P and Dow, for example, have, have tried to move higher. Uh, and even the NASDAQ, uh, the large cap NASDAQ. And uh, because of that, we've got divergence with the small and mid-caps showing weakness. Um, almost 43 out of 50, it's a very large percentage of them. Uh, of the stocks that were the biggest percentage gainers over the past few days, um, you know, basically 86% of those stocks were stocks that were already trading below their 200-day moving averages. In other words, really weak stocks, and just uh, rallied off the bottom. So uh, that was probably primarily, you know, uh, what you call value hunters stepping in to buy stuff that is quote unquote oversold. But uh, obviously, our trading methodology. Those of you who've been with us for more than you know, a couple of days or a couple of weeks, uh, you already know that our trading methodology is based on buying strong stocks, not weak stocks. Okay, we sell short weak stocks in downtrending markets only. But uh, as far as stocks we buy, we buy strong stocks either on a pullback uh, or on breakouts because momentum based trading strategies work. Okay, there's actually uh, a video on our blog that talks about our trading strategy. Uh, you click on swing trading strategy if you haven't done so. I'll show you where that is later, but highly recommend you watch that. Okay, so anyway, I just wanted to start off by kind of showing you that um, this is the reason, you know, for those of you who are new, in case you're wondering why we haven't been giving many plays lately, um, this this kind of sums it up right here. You know, although the the major indices are rallying, it's a bit deceiving, and that's one of the troubles with this rally. We don't trade, um, you know, we, we don't really trade large cap stocks like, uh, you know, General Electric or anything like that, unless there's something spectacular happening. Um, we trade momentum stocks, which is primarily small and mid-cap. So when there's nothing happening, rather than just giving you action, just for the sake of giving you action, we tend to just lay low. 
Um, this is the reason also why our market timing model, which you see at the top of each day's newsletter, okay, if I scroll up here, uh, you can see our market timing model is neutral, and it's been that way since August 2nd. So, um, you know, even though the market's going up, our market timing model is not yet sh shifted to buy mode. It's neutral, which means that we may dip a toe in the water on the long side or possibly the short side, but uh, not at this moment because the, the bias is to the upside. Um, so that's um, the neutral model mode, though, just means that we're not getting enough confirmation to uh, for in the intermediate term anyway to to be on the, on the buy side so in the near term we've got some strength but we're seeing a lack of confirmation in small cap stocks and mid cap stocks and intermediate term you know we're, we have a neutral bias going so um, I know with that a lot of new subscribers they think that we should be in stocks every day or ETFs every day but um, sure I mean if you want to do that just just go to Vegas because uh, we're here to keep you out of trouble when the market environment is not conducive uh, and to profit and put the pedal to the metal so to speak when market conditions are doing well and uh, lately uh, it's been a very deceiving market uh, that, that hasn't had a lot of follow through in either direction now that being said that could change at any moment uh, in any given day and when it does we'll be prepared to take advantage of it when we scan for the stock plays every night that look good and you'll be the first to know if you're a subscriber but in the meantime, that's where we are. It's you know, it's cash is a very valid position, and right now we're still primarily in capital preservation mode. Just wanted to start by showing you that. Uh, also, if you haven't done so, um, you may also want to check out the ETF commentary in today's newsletter. Um, we wrote about uh, you can see here the QQQ, which is the ETF for the benchmark uh, Nasdaq 100 index, and we wrote about uh, SPY, which is the S&P 500 spider. Uh, just did some basic uh, trend analysis um, with moving averages, the 20 period and 50 period, as well as uh, trend channels. Just to show you where we are, you can see here real quickly that the SPY is once again nearing the upper trend, upper uh, channel resistance of the uptrend that it's been in uh, for the past several months since uh, since since the May lows. Um, and uh, so, what this tells us is that if this uh, trend is to continue, that um, you know the odds would favor um, you know either a pullback or at least sideways consolidation in the near term and uh, if we do get some consolidation uh, or a pullback that would be fine but uh, the bigger issue here is as you as we also pointed out notice this key resistance level here at 142 just over the 142 area the horizontal line you can see that uh, as the intermediate term trend has been trending higher we're running into this big horizontal price resistance so the risk reward, you know, using the SPY as a proxy for the broad market just really isn't that favorable right now. Uh, although if we do get a pullback, then uh, we may see some some setups, but it really all depends on the action, the price action of the leading stocks. Now the NASDAQ has actually been um, showing a little bit different divergence. The NASDAQ still has a little bit further to go before reaching its highs, uh, prior highs here, which you can see is the dashed black horizontal lines. However, the NASDAQ has already bumped into the upper channel resistance of its trend line, okay, which could be why we're seeing a bit of sideways action last time I looked a few minutes ago. You know, what do we have here? Well, if you look at the intermediate term trend going back, uh, let's say at least six months, we just have uh, the market in no man's land, really not going anywhere. Uh, well off the May lows, but well off the, uh, the, the highs as well, especially the NASDAQ. Um, so in the shorter term, it's been just very choppy. I mean, you can look at the price action here over the past couple months, gapping up 2%, down 2%, up 2%, down 2%. And uh, that's why throughout last month, July, we primarily were in cash throughout the month. And we even made a little bit with individual stock plays in the model portfolio of the newsletter. We even made about 1% despite the chop. But like I said, you know, we're just laying low until we get more confirmation. Rest assured uh, that uh, we will be there to aggressively take advantage of uh, new trade entries when they present themselves. But in the meantime, uh, patient traders will be rewarded. Okay, so enough about the broad market. What I'd like to do now is um, we've got about 15 minutes left in the webinar. I want to dive into showing you our technical stock screener and um, we've sent out a few emails about this so um, you may have already tried it out but if you haven't um, it's something we're proud of and I, and I recommend you check out you can find this by going simply going to the morpheustrading.com website and clicking on the tab here it's a stock screener and it will load this page that you see right here it kinda tells you what our stock screener is 
Uh, there's a video here. Um, highly recommended you watch this this five minute video before you try to use the screener because it gives a, a real brief overview of how to use the screener. And uh, then once you watch the screener, then you can actually launch it. Now, uh, the first thing you need to know is the stock screener. It is web based. Uh, you don't need to download any software. That's the beauty of it. And uh, it, it just runs in any HTML5 compatible web browser, which basically is the most up-to-date version of any browser that you use, whether it's Chrome or Internet Explorer or any of those. even works on iPad and Android. Uh, we recommend the Dolphin browser for that. Um, so again, if, after you've watched this video, then you would come and click on Launch the MTG Stock Screener. So this is the uh, page that will load up. Now, uh, this video that you see here on the home page is the same video as the previous video so no need to watch it again but in case you arrive directly at this URL you can go directly to screener.morpheustrading.com and then you can bypass that that previous page now what is the Morpheus stock screener well as you know uh, we scan for particular setups technical setups in the newsletter each day for the ETFs and stocks okay we look for um, we have a very disciplined trading strategy we look primarily for uh, on the long side, stocks that are breaking out of valid bases of consolidation and stocks that are also already in an uptrend and have pulled back to some kind of support level. Uh, on the downside, we've got, uh, if the market's in a downtrend, we, we look to short sell short any stocks that are bouncing into resistance. Now, the key here, the very first thing I want to say is that, um, you know, we're trend traders. So we do not recommend that you look at short selling setups if we're in a raging bull market. Um, nor would you want to look at buy setups if we're in a, a powerful bear market. Right now, with the market, um, you know, our, our bias is neutral in the intermediate term, but the near-term trend is is up. So, you know, we'd focus on buy setups right now as opposed to short selling. There's a lot of other screeners out there in the market, uh, some technical, some fundamental, but most of them require programming or coding knowledge. Uh, what we've really tried hard to do with our screener is to take all the uh, hard work out of doing that and to give you a turnkey approach to finding exactly what we look for, what we've been doing for years and years, coding ourselves behind the scenes, um, you know, locking, uh, locking, locking ourselves in the, in the basement, so to speak, uh, with a computer and, and coding to scan for the top stocks. Well, we've done all that now and made it in a user-friendly format for the end user, which is you, to check out. Um, and uh, the way you do it, the way you use it here is very simple. Uh, you first click on country. Um, obviously, for Morpheus, we focus on the U.S., but we're also soon launching a product for the Indian stock market. So you can even, uh, if anybody happens to trade the Indian stock market, you can scan for Indian stocks. The default is U.S. And then you select stocks or ETFs. Now, um, if you want to scan for individual stocks, you can, uh, or ETFs, you can. Now. The reason we have a, the, we, the reason we make you choose between stocks or ETFs is the technical criteria is slightly different for ETFs. Um, the minimum price and minimum volume requirements are different, and the um, also the relative strength rating is different for the stocks versus the ETFs. So you select whether you want stocks or ETFs. Um, if you select stocks, it'll ask what exchanges you want. If you don't check anything, all three of them will be selected by default. But if, for example, you wanted to look primarily only at you know, aggressive growth companies in the NASDAQ and eliminate the NYSE, you could just check NASDAQ, for example. All right. And then come down here to buy setups and you click on either you want to look for a potential breakout or a pullback. So you click on potential breakouts. So you can see here, um, just all I did was click on potential breakouts and it says up here 34 results returned. Uh, so that means there's 34 stocks in the NASDAQ that meet our predefined criteria for a potential breakout. Uh, which is basically stocks that are basing in a tight pattern uh, above their 20 and day 20 and 50 day moving averages. Um, there's a lot there's a lot of different rules that we've programmed into that. Now by default, the minimum volume we put in here is 200,000 shares and ten dollars uh, minimum share price per um, as well. Uh, we're not interested in trading penny stocks or illiquid stocks, so we eliminate a lot of the junk automatically. Now if if you um, first thing you can do is you can actually sort, by any of these column headings. So let's say, for example, you want to sort by industry sector. You can do that right here. Just click on the column heading at the top, and it'll sort. Now this is handy. You can see, for example, you'll see trends. Notice how out of the 34 stocks returned, majority of the stocks returned are in the healthcare sector. 
you can see here. So you'll notice that what happens though is, you know, we, we talk a lot about sector trading and when one sector is strong, you'll see that a majority of stocks setups are in that sector. Hence the reason that ONXX right here uh, is actually one of our setups that just triggered for, for buy entry. It's one of the strongest sectors right now is uh, the healthcare and uh, specifically biotech arena. So you can group them together by healthcare or any of these other columns you can sort by. We have today's closing price, or actually it's the most recent day's close. Uh, point gain or loss, percentage gain or loss, average volume, um, today's volume versus the average volume. So you can look for volume spikes. Like let's say you want to see what was really active yesterday. Uh, you could sort, I'll click again, it'll sort the other way. You can see the stocks out of all these on the list, you know, like NTSP had traded 778% of its average daily volume. And then um, relative strength is the last column. By default, the stocks are sorted by relative strength with the, uh, the, the strongest stocks at the top um, is, the, is the default sort setting. Now, relative strength, that's not to be confused with the RSI indicator. Uh, this is actually our own proprietary measure of how strong a stock is relative to all the other stocks in the market. So uh, it's simply a percentage. So uh, a stock with a 99 rating means it's basically one of the strongest stocks in the market. And our minimum cutoff here is 87. You can see um, all the stocks above 87 are listed here. Uh, so we're, we're, you know, we're seeing only the strongest stocks. Uh, now you can also filter these individual results. If, for example, you wanted to make sure that you saw only stocks with at least half a million shares average daily volume, okay, you can do that. You just click type in 500,000 for average volume and then must be greater than or equal to. So select that filter and now the results that are returned now we only have 21 results so very user friendly I mean it's extremely simple to use and now the best part is uh, you can export these results you click up here uh, export to Excel uh, or export to a CSV file it, that's if you have your own trading software like uh, TradeStation for example you can export the results and then import them into a watch list uh, so you can set your your price triggers for when you want to buy to look at the charts you simply click on any of these ticker symbols and a chart will load up and again this even works on your uh, iPad or your smartphone. The default range here that's displayed is um, six months of the most six the most recent six months of price data is displayed but easy to change if you want to get a closer view you can down here at the bottom you see where my mouse is you can drag this little bar and look at just the most recent two or three months or even you know even more if you like and you can see the candles get bigger or if you want to stretch it out you can go back a year or even more now of course uh, it gets hard to see with daily bars um, so you can keep it on auto and the bars will switch from daily to weekly or you can click on weekly now presently this feature is not yet working the software is in beta release so there's still some things that were some features and bells and whistles were adding to it uh, one thing for example is the ability to uh, actually um, move these uh, the, the rightmost candlestick further to the left so that's going to be fixed soon as well but anyway uh, for now you can just drag this bar at the bottom uh, by default we show that 20 the 50 and the 200 day moving averages which are the same moving averages that we use in our analysis every day we're also adding we're also going to be adding um, drawing tools so you'll soon be able to draw trend lines and put text annotations on the charts but in the meantime though What's really nice is you have this vertical red bar. You can see as I drag my mouse to the left, the vertical red bar moves along and shows you the prices at the top. On the top left side up here, you can see the prices that correspond to whatever day I'm looking at. So for example, yesterday, August 7th, if I put my, my uh, vertical red bar there, you can see O is the open price. Well, now I'm not on that day anymore. But if you look up here in the top left corner of the chart, you see the open price 57.10, the high of the day was 58 low 56.51 and it closed at 56.84 and then you can see the three different um, moving average uh, prices as well so even though we can't draw trend lines at the moment this is handy because normally um, you know if we have a tight range we buy over top of the range high so for example you know if you wanted to buy PCYC over yesterday's high you can see by simply by looking at the numbers on the top left the high was 58 exactly so, you know, you'd be looking for to set your price alarm on a rally over 58 if, if that was um, what you were looking to do. Now, we'd prefer the pullback in this stock, but just as an example. what One thing that's also nice is you can quickly scan through the list of stocks looking at our charts simply by hitting your space bar. 
it's a quick way to look through all the charts. Now, presently, if you do change the uh, date, the date range you're looking at, okay, now you won't be able to click on the space bar. Uh, you'll have to go back and click on just manually click on the next stock, which is easy enough. You see the blue here, you just click on the next one. That's again just a little bug that we're working on uh, in the beta release. Here's the setup that we had in today's newsletter, uh, which was Onyx Pharmaceuticals. We were looking to buy this on a rally above the two-day high, okay, and uh, which was right here because we had a nice pullback to the 20-day moving average after a big volume breakout uh, back in June of this year. Uh, so it triggered just a little while ago, right when we were getting ready to start the webinar. So we're looking, you know, um, ideally for a rally up to test the prior high. Um, and we got a tight stop, you know, below the uh, the low of the of the reversal here. Yeah, actually, a lot of the stocks that we find uh, in the newsletter each day come from this uh, new screener. Um, now, the benefit of subscribing to the newsletter is that you're going to get only the best hand cherry pick stocks. I mean, the screener returns, you know, 20, 30 ideas, but you know, we're going to give you our best one or two. Uh, hand-picked discretionary picks out of the best results um, and sometimes it might not even be a stock that's on the screener but most of the time it will be um, and then of course we give you the other thing is the screener doesn't tell you ex our exact entry and exit prices whereas we do so the screener is really meant to be used in combination with the uh, the newsletter um, and you know for those of you who are more do-it-yourself kind of traders in other words presently the screener is free for everyone to access because it's in beta release it's going to be free for a while yet. Now, eventually, obviously, we do have to pay for data feed. The data feed's not free. In fact, it's quite expensive. But um, we're going to give a, a nice discount to people who are already subscribing to the newsletter. In fact, it's probably only going to be like less than $20 a month if you wanted to add this on to your newsletter subscription. And then people who don't subscribe to the newsletter, it would be available for a little higher fee. But um, And we'll be adding, we'll continue to be adding features to it. We'll be adding new scans and other capabilities as well but the whole idea here as you can see is it's a turnkey approach um, you know for those of you who live busy lives and don't have time to look through you know hundreds of stock charts every night this is a quick way even with your morning coffee you can load it up and in a matter of minutes have a few stock ideas to watch uh, throughout the day you know potential breakouts or pullbacks check it out if you haven't done so again you can do that by going to morpheustrading.com and then clicking on the tab here it's a stock screener uh, again, be sure to watch this video tutorial first, and then you can launch the stock screener like this. Uh, very easy to do. Um, now, if, uh, I did mention on our blog, there was one thing I wanted you to check out. You can click on our blog. One thing that I recommend you check out is um, this video here, if you haven't seen it yet, called Swing Trading Strategy. It's, on the, it's a link on the top right side of our blog. And what you'll see there is a video, a seven minute video that summarizes our swing trading strategy. So if you, especially if you're new to our methodology, you can watch this. And in there, you're gonna see exactly what our breakout setups are, what our pullback setups are. And that's exactly what the stock screener that I just showed you is programmed for. Uh, so um, this is uh, just kind of an idea of, you know, it gives you an idea of, of how everything works with our stock trading strategy. And then there's some text here uh, that explains things as well. So check that out. Uh, if you, the, you can see the link directly here if you want to go there directly. But uh, just the easiest way is to go to our blog and then click on Swing Trading Strategy. The blog you can access directly from the Morpheus site. Just click on our blog. I have time for a few questions, so if anybody has any questions, uh, this is the time. Go ahead and type your questions into the chat box on the Go Meet Now module, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Okay, I see Arthur asked a question. What do I think of CBS between now and the election? Well, so yeah, so CBS was a breakout, broke out four days ago. Now it's uh, starting to form, maybe forming what's called a bull flag. Um, it looks good here if we look at the uh, weekly chart. What I like about here on the weekly chart is it's actually broken out to a multi-year high. You can see here drawing the horizontal line, you can see it's trading at a new high. So that looks pretty good. Uh, what I'd be looking to do here is to buy... Uh, CBS, if you do happen to get a pullback, you can get a pullback either to the prior high from May, which should now act as resistance because the prior level of support becomes resistance after the resistance is broken. Or if you get a slight pullback the next couple of days, then you could buy the uh, a rally above the uh, the short term, you know, downtrend line like this above the flag, high of the flag. So yeah, it looks pretty good. It's a it's a nice it's a nice pattern there.
Okay, um, Lars is saying the stop for Onyx is 69.04, below the swing low, but as support. How do you decide which is more important, as that area could be a buy point? Okay, let me take a look at the chart and answer your question. Okay. Uh, yes, well, when we it depends on the type of setup, Lars. This is actually a pullback setup, okay? Um, you see that uh, Onyx has actually pulled back to um, its 20-day exponential moving average, this blue line. Now, what we found historically, in fact, uh, if you look at uh, uh, the book that I that I wrote, um, the last book called ETF Trading Strategies, stocks work the same way. I talk about a, the first pullback to the 20-day exponential moving average after a big breakout like this um, very, very uh, often presents a low-risk buying opportunity. It's unusual for a stock to pull back to the 20-day exponential moving average and then immediately, you know, uh, fall apart. And you can see we did undercut the 20-day moving average, which is common. It shakes out the... Uh, people with stops that are too tight but now it's stabilized and the reason we had to stop where it was is it's because it's a pullback entry all right our, our breakout entry making the bars bigger here our breakout entry was above this this high of the past two days okay basically right there okay uh, that was our breakout entry now whenever we have a um, I'm sorry not a breakout entry that was our pullback entry when we have pullback entry, we wait for the pullback, and then we wait for a rally above the high of the reversal candle. The reversal candle was right here on August 6th. So whenever we have that type of setup, our stop always goes right below the low uh, of that reversal candle. And we use a very tight stop with this type of play because once you've, that reversal candle forms, um, the stock's price action should not come back down below this, uh, the low of this reversal candle. If it does, then it means our entry was too early. Okay, it's, it's, it's not a good time to be in. So we just quickly get out rather than sitting in it and seeing how far it's going to pull back. We would get out and potentially look for a better entry, either on a pullback to the 50-day moving average or if it consolidates more. Yeah, we do tend to use very tight stops on the pullback trade. Our philosophy is we either want to we want to be right or we want to be right out. Um, so uh, you, you'll find it's you know very regimented. Our stops are typically below the low of the reversal bar when it's a pullback entry. So hopefully that answers your question. Got time for one more question here. If anybody has any other questions, you can just type them in the chat box. Got time for one more, and then we'll have to wrap things up. Okay, Leonor is asking about AOS. Yeah, AOS, looking at the weekly chart, I mean, we always look at the longer-term chart to see the overall big picture. You can see on the weekly chart, it's in a steady uptrend. That looks pretty good on the weekly chart. And uh, yeah, today it's making a big move above the, looking at the daily chart, making a big move above the three-day high. Okay, and so that's a valid trigger for buy entry would be above this three-day high, above the 50-56 uh, level. And at the same time, that a, that actually, this today's move happens to coincide with a breakout above this downtrend line from the uh, the high of the breakout. So it a, it's a pullback entry off the high. Um, and the 50-day MMA has been providing support. Now, it has been quite choppy. What I don't like too much is um, this range here two weeks ago was a bit choppy. But then the price action tightened up over the past few days. So it does look better. And, uh, you know, I would say odds favor a move at least back to this prior high. Um, so, it uh, yeah, it looks like a pretty solid setup. All right, everybody, we do have to wrap things up for now. As always, though, uh, we're available to answer any questions that you have. Um, we value you know, um, our subscribers, and we're happy to answer any questions you have, uh, either through attending these uh, live webinars is the best way to ask questions, but you can also always send your questions to editors at morpheustrading.com, and uh, we respond uh, as quickly as we can to any questions about our trading strategy or anything like that you want to know. We are more than happy to help. Please check out our stock screener. We think you'll enjoy that and find that to be uh, very useful. And um, we'll see you next Monday at the next uh, webinar. And we'll see you uh, in the trading room tomorrow, uh, 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.